the news came out last week. Governor Evers said, hey, let's stay at home till, you know, another month. And that was discouraging to me. I don't know if you were discouraged by that. Uh, I expected it. And I know that we have got to be super careful. So I am not this, you know, gonna gonna move away from the governor's orders. I want to respect our leaders. Uh, and it doesn't matter where they are politically. Uh, the reality is Romans 13, one says you and I are called to submit to our, our governing officials. So let's do that. Let's do that with a good attitude. Let's do that happily. But we're human. And regardless of who makes the order or what the situation is, it's painful to uh, be quarantined. We're made for relationship. If you ever, if you ever read the, the story of uh, Anne Frank, she was a person that had to live like in her attic for two or attic a t t i c upstairs a uh, small little area like uh six or eight people in the attic and it was like 600 or 800 days she had to live there because of the name of jesus christ and so just thinking about that kind of endurance and that kind of quarantine and that kind of close quarters uh man it, it's heavy to think about that so uh I know that I can't compare and you can't compare what we're going through with what she went through. And I'm not trying to compare the two, but I am trying to say this. Both situations require long suffering or patience. And I, I asked myself this week, preparing for this video, what is long suffering? What does it mean to suffer long? Uh, we use the word patience because it, we know what we mean, you know, just like, okay, endure, get through. But Christian long suffering is not just getting through something. After all, God is long suffering. He suffers long waiting for, for uh, people to come to him. The Bible says real clearly that um, we people uh, rebelled quickly against God. God said, hey, in the day you rebel against me, you will surely die. And from that day until the day Christ returns, God has been long suffering. He's been suffering long. The, the definition, the idea is the capacity to hold out or to bear up in the face of dif difficulty. Do you, let me say it again. Uh, long suffering is the capacity to hold out or bear up in the face of difficulty. And the big thing I want to start with today is that uh, God is the first long sufferer. He's holding out and bearing up. He's holding to his plan and holding to his holiness and holding to his love while mankind has, we have made ourselves his enemy, uh, and he's waiting, and he's waiting um, gladly. Uh, a, a second concept in this whole idea of long suffering is the the act of patiently waiting for someone, and that's where if we go to Second Peter chapter three, God is. And I think sometimes we think God's not doing anything. God is impotent. He has no power, no strength. God has forgotten us, or we suppress what God has said about who he is. And, and we do all of that and say, no way God's ever going to come back and reward faithful people, or more likely we say, no way he's ever going to come and, and pour out his wrath against sinners. That's just never going to happen. We think that. But long suffering says that God is patiently enduring his plan. He's patiently enduring our rebellion, waiting for the time in the future when he will carry out his plan perfectly. And that's why long suffering is a fruit of the Spirit. Uh, Christians should be able to patiently endure. We should patiently endure suffering. And because God patiently endures, uh, waiting for us to repent. So, so God is, is long-suffering, and he is patient. Here are some things that are true about God while he waits. And it's going to be true of us. God is the speaker 
we are the echo of what God speaks. So if he's the ultimate speaker, when he speaks or when he puts on display his long suffering, then, then the way we do it should echo that same thing. So here's the question. Uh, in what way do we echo God's long suffering? And I, I jotted down a few things that are true about God as he waits for sinners to repent. Uh, he does it with kindness. So here's COVID-19, you're at home. Are you enduring and waiting with kindness? Scripture says it's his kindness while he waits that leads sinners to repent and trust him. So just kicking through and getting through is not the point. It's enduring difficulty with kindness. Kindness is uh, purposefully looking out for the needs of others, purposely doing good to others in the midst of and while you wait. Not picking arguments, not trying to win debates, uh, not uh, getting through with angst and anger. It, it is kindly waiting for God to bring uh, these current days to their appointed ends. God's kindness is a confident kindness, or excuse me, God's patience is a confident patience. So while he's waiting and he sees the current level of difficulty, there's not one iota of God that is thinking, uh-oh, something's gone wrong here. Something's not going to turn out in the future for my good. Something is not going to... Uh, uh, produce an expected end according to the word. God's not doing that at all. God, in the midst of the worst and hardest situations in the world, God is enduring with complete confidence that every one of his purposes that he has for this world, it's going to come to the place where it, it accomplishes exactly what he wants it to accomplish. He's waiting with confidence. He's waiting with joy. According to Romans chapter 2, if you want a little review of God's patience, take a look at Romans chapter 2, verses 4 through 8. But uh, he is complete joy while he waits. While there are rebels, while there are haters, while there are doubters, while there are people who think his word is stupid, Romans 1 says while there are suppressors. While people suppress the truth, while there are all these rebels, Romans 1 and Romans chapter 2, God says he, he's waiting with joy. He is waiting with complete joy. And if you're in the midst of Corona, the Rona, and you are like just out of your, you know, you're just kicking through. Can I just remind you, one of the aspects of Christian patience is joy. Because you look ahead to this future and you go, man. What's going to happen? Here's what's going to happen. God is going to bring every one of his purposes to a perfect end, even if you don't have toilet paper. Now, I know that perfect end in toilet paper is a funny, funny joke, but I didn't mean for it to be. All right. So, uh, and lastly, with expectation. Expectation. <laughs> Look, guys, hope is a big part of patience. We Again, we're not just kicking through hoping, I mean, like, human hope, just trying to make it through, hoping we can endure, uh, wishing we can get through this. Uh, but there's an expectation. Uh, my definition of hope is a complete confidence that God is at work in my future according to his word for my good. I'll say that again because it helps me to review it a, a, a little bit. But God is, he is strongly at work in the, in the future. He's, he's at work now for, for my future according to his word for good for me. That's what he's at work doing right now. And that's what long suffering is all about. So, so think about that. Here's what we just said. We said that God is, while he waits with rebels and difficulty, all around him, while he waits, he is kind, he is confident, he is joyful, 
and he has an expectation of good in the future according to his purposes. And that's what Christian patience is all about. Now, God, God's word is the initial word, and then he screams it over a mountainous pass, and you and I as humans echo it back. We echo it back as, as best we can. We're not perfect. We're not God, but we can emulate God, and God's spirit lives in us to give us the ability to have the same kind of patience. So while you are enduring, while you are moving through difficulty, while you are waiting for a good future that God is working according to his promise and according to his, uh, his will, here's some practical considerations for you, okay? Uh, you're asking the big questions, right? Long suffering, how long, how long? And uh, listen, in all of life, God doesn't ever answer that question. But the length of coronavirus quarantine the length of this weird time. Could I, but can I just say to you, as a Christian, how beautiful will our testimony be to our neighbors if we can endure this hard times, doing our best to minimize the how long question. We know this, that in the how long, God intends to bring people to repentance, according to Second Peter chapter 3. We think he's slow. We think he's not moving. But in the midst of that, all these people have forgotten how great God is. And they've forgotten how fearful his wrath could appear to be. And while he waits, he's bringing sinners to himself. And the goal of his waiting is opening the very borders of heaven to draw all people to himself with love. And he wants to use you and me to do that. So if I just kick through this coronavirus and I'm cranky all the time, look, I get it. I'm human. I'm cranky sometimes. But if I'm cranky all the time, if I'm complaining about governor stays at stay at home orders, if I'm protesting and, and angst, if I'm constantly critical of everyone around me, I'm going to lose an opportunity to be like God in his long suffering, who is kind and confident and joyful and expectant. Uh, Patiently hold to your clear message about Jesus in the midst of this. Uh, I say that because of Proverbs 25, verse 15. So Proverbs 25, 15 says, uh, Patiently and clearly hold to your message, and then when you leave the king, he's going to have to think about it. And can I just say to you, if you're dealing with your adult kids, if you're dealing with a grandma or grandpa, if you're dealing with a spouse, patiently kindly hold to your message about the sufficiency and glory of Jesus Christ. And when you leave them, they're going to have to think about what you said, that you are clinging in the midst of coronavirus, you're clinging to the fact that Jesus is enough. And as you cling to him, you may lose the in-person discussion about how great God is, but the truth of what you said is going to ring in their ears. And Proverbs 25, 15 says, eventually the king's going to have to deal with what you said to him. But the key is this. Hold to your message about Jesus with love and patience while you wait. Do that with your kids. Do that with your grandkids. Uh, patiently wait. Doubters and critics, they're going to hear your message while you, while you wait. Uh, second concept, be, be happy while you wait. Now that's easy. You say, where do you get that happy? I'm not happy about this. I, in my flesh, I'm not happy either. But James 1.12 says, uh, blessed is a man who patiently endures. And that word blessed, you know, people like to uh, split hairs, but can I just tell you what, what blessed means? Happy. Happy is the man who right now endures. Now here's our option. I can endure hardship or I can try to escape hardship. And James 1 says, happy is the man who remains faithful in the hardship. That's what God is doing right now. Long suffering. That is, faithful 
suffering is better than trying to escape suffering. And so that's what you're called to do. And that's what I'm called to do. Uh, so you'll be happier in the future and now if you embrace the suffering now rather than try to avoid or even uh, somehow diminish the suffering now. now. We think that if we could just avoid the suffering, if we could just get back to the way things were. But can I just tell you, I don't want to get back to the way things were. I want to show love better. I want to care deeper. I want to have more significant in-person meetings. I want to be on my phone less. I want to, you know, all these things that, uh, so, so getting back to the way things were, I hope that's not like a major motivator in your life. Let's not get back to the way things were. Let us endure patiently uh, what God has called us to do. So you'll be happier if you patiently endure. Uh, you're not trying to escape. Um, there's a future reward. Uh, James 1.12 says uh, there's a future reward for those who endure. Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial, but when he stood the test, he will receive the crown of life. For those who are in Christ, there's a future reward for enduring hardness right now. So here's two things I just said. Number one, you'll actually be happier now if you endure and don't try to avoid the, the, the trial. And you'll be happier in the future because you'll get a crown of life, the scriptures say, in, in heaven forever. And God has promised that to those who love him. And so enduring, Christianly enduring this time of, of uncertainty is a, a something that, that uh, you receive the, the now and the future blessing from. Um, and then lastly, it, I want to say this. Uh, you know, why, I love to run. Running is my thing. I really like to run. But so often I realize that I don't run to run. Uh, I run so that I can have strong legs and, uh, well, I guess nothing else in me is really all that strong, but strong legs to uh, serve my wife and to serve my family. Why do we exercise? We exercise to have strong bodies to serve the people around us, to love people, to care for them, so that we can do that longer throughout life. We also exercise because uh, I, you know, here's another little side note I want to tell you. I realized that my little app that I track stuff on, my goal, my, my app gave me a goal, and I've had it for two years, and basically says to be active for 150 minutes a week. Okay, so that's two and a half hours. Uh, do you know that people like pioneers who settled this country were active 10 hours a day? Like they're just constantly active. They were, they were pushing it. They were moving it all the time, 600 minutes a day. Now our goal is 150 minutes a week. Well, my point is that they were strong to serve and to work. And, and now we exercise and we ask ourselves, is I'm just saying this, the exercise isn't the goal. The goal is to have strong bodies to serve the people around us. And so uh, I, I trust that, that is, is your goal as well. And uh, my point in saying all that is, is that when you test your muscles, you can trust your muscles. And, and the tr this trial that we're going through in coronavirus is a testing of our faith. And when our faith is tested, we have to, we have to ask ourselves, Am I trusting the risen Christ and the power of God's word to bring me through this time in my life, this, this little um, moment in my life? Am I trusting God? Am I trusting Christ? Am I trusting his word? Because when we know for sure that we're not trying to do it in our strength, we're not saying no to God and doing it our own way, we're embracing his word, we're believing his word, we're, we're growing in our prayer life, we're asking him to act. When we do those things, then we can look at our own faith and go, you know what? I 100% am counting on God. I, I am counting on him to come through. I'm believing his promises. I am going to his word for comfort. And that's what James 1, 12 and following means when it says, here's the progression. You're happy 
and you can count it joy when you go through all these various kinds of, of trials and struggles. And uh, know this, that when you do, when your faith is trusted, and when your faith is tested, that eventually the goal of the testing is so that you can know for sure that you've got a rock solid faith in Jesus Christ. And really, that's what this whole long suffering thing has given you the opportunity to answer the question Is my faith securely in Jesus Christ alone? My friend, when you go through the hardest of circumstances and the hardest of difficulties, and you can look back and say, okay, relational stress off the charts. I trust Jesus. Financial questions everywhere I turn. I don't know how we're going to get through. Oh, God, would you come and help? And, and the testing of your faith produces endurance. And you look back and go, when, when I had nothing, when I had nothing. God came through. Uh, college or senior year of high school put on complete hiatus. I went through, you, can, you will be able to say one day, I went through that hardship with kindness and confidence and joy and expectation and God was at work for a future good in my life and I see that he is good. And you will be able for the rest of your life to say, oh yes, I trusted him and I trust him alone for this. And that's our heartbeat, is that uh, together we have that kind of patience and that kind of long suffering so that our faith is tested, so we, believe, we, we know that we are trusting God. We go through the hardest situations and come out on the other side saying, I believe God. I trust him. So my friends, uh, I'm not making light of how hard this coronavirus thing has been. I'm not making light. I can't imagine. I see friends here that have that are going through relational difficulties. I see friends here that are going through, um, you know, I know brothers and sisters that are uh, uh, ER docs in New York uh, at ground zero of coronavirus, where literally their health and their life is on the line. We're not making light of it. This is the hardest things we're going to go through. But if you can trust God now in the midst of this, if you can say securely and strongly, Jesus Christ has risen from the dead and he's my only hope, my only hope for salvation in the midst of this, you're going to be able to say it for the rest of your life because a tested faith is a trusted faith.